Great. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Um, today, we're going to learn about fantastic fungi and where to find them. I couldn't help myself but have that title on here. Um, I'm Debarazi. I'm a graduate student at McGill University. I'm not a mycologist. I'm just an enthusiast. I'm an amateur. I am a planetary geologist. Um, so who am I? I? Like I said, I'm a graduate student at McGill University. I actually study the past water activity on Gale Crater on Mars using the Curiosity River. Um, that doesn't really have anything directly to do with plants. I just really like plants, listening about them. So Ingrid's talk was amazing. I learned so much. Um, love uh, looking at my, you know, mycology and mushrooms. Uh, but if you want to know more about my other research, you can just Google finding Mars in Death Valley um, and you'll see my blog. And but today is about mushrooms and I will tell you what I know. Uh, this in no way is an exhaustive list of mushrooms or the only way to look at mushrooms. This is just my journey with mushrooms and uh, hopefully it'll be a little less intimidating because I'm also coming at this from a very amateur or like new newbie uh, perspective. So if you, if there are, you know, pictures of mushrooms that you have seen or like on your hikes and walks, you have seen mushrooms, maybe you can match them here and I'll give you a couple of tips on what you can do. So let's get started. So what I'll cover today is just a couple of basics of fungi, um, what I've learned so far, some common mushrooms of Quebec, uh, how, to, how to be a mycology enthusiast and some resources. And most of the pictures that you see on this presentation are taken by me. Uh, if they're not, I've put in a little link at the bottom. And all right, let's get moving. So um, when you think of uh, mushrooms, what do you think they're plants or do you think they're animals? I think a lot of us kind of tend to think that they're plants. You know, this is a similar question uh, compared to Ingrid's, you know, are these plants? Because they're coming out of the coming out of the ground, you know, like a lot of plants do. Um, but uh, mushrooms are far more complex creatures. They're not quite plants, and sometimes they behave like animals in different stages of their lives. So, in the kingdom of living things, which fluctuates between five, six, and seven based on which year we are in, um, fungi always has its own classification. Fungi has its own kingdom. So, if you look at this picture on top, that's a mushroom. It's coming out of the ground. That's a that's a fungi. And often, when you go for walks, you'll see these little like slimy mold things. Um, it's a slime mold, which often can be confused for fungi, but they are slimes, slime molds, and have uh, little creatures which resemble amoeba, and they actually belong to the protista kingdom. So their slime molds are a little bit different from fungi. Um, and I'll show you pictures that kind of, you know, as a comparison. So what is a mushroom? And is it, you know, is it, the, is it the end product? Is there more to it? So here, here, we, like, look at this nice little diagram I got off the internet. Um, here, here's the mushroom body. It's known as a fruiting body. So it's not the only part of the whole system. You know, it, it actually has more to it. It's only the tip of the iceberg. So the mushroom, if you've seen one often on the underside, it has gills or spores, and they actually have these little phalanges called basidia. And on the end of basidia, there are things called spores. So spore is basically kind of like an equivalent of seeds, you know? So spores, um, they fall onto the ground. And during the spore stage, actually, mushrooms often, like this part of mushroom often behaves like uh, animals. They, they move around to areas that are, you know, favorable for them. And then they germinate. They germinate into a stage called hyphae. And hyphae can be of many different types. More than two or many kinds of hyphae can come together, can melt together to form something called mycelium. So these thread-like structures that you see over here are mycelium, mycelia. And they can be resultant of many, many kinds of hyphae. It doesn't have to be two hyphae. So which gives, you know, which results into many different kinds of mushrooms, which is why mushrooms are so complex. 
two even if even if you have two same kinds of mushroom like you know a button mushroom that you see or or a morel if you've heard of morels not not two of them will have the same genetic makeup they are different genetically or they're very complex so when mycelia find a favorable environment they produce a fruiting body which uh, it starts with a hyphal knot which goes up to a primordia and then it becomes a uh, Oops, a mushroom, the fruiting body. So here you can see these, this really beautiful picture. Um, and often if you've like ever seen a mushroom growing kit, um, which I'll show you a picture of later, you can actually see the mycelia slowly evolving into a mushroom. And because there's this network, it, it often in woods, okay, I'm not going to my next, oops, I'm gonna stop share real quick and then start it again. Uh, share. All right, people can see my screen, right? I mean, yeah. Oh, there we go. So often because mushrooms have these like mycelial yes. network. Great, thank you. <laughs> um, the fungi, uh, many of the fungi can form a mycorrhizal network with trees in woods. So what it does is it spreads its network and forms a symbiotic relationship with quite a lot of trees. Um, almost 90% of plants and trees have a mycorrhizal uh, symbiotic relationship. What it does, so these mycelia help connect different plants and trees and often uh, get nutrients and carbon and oxygen from these trees. And in this, in this method it's also helping trees kind of communicate with each other and this sort of a relationship is especially helpful for plants that don't get nutrition from photosynthesis for example if you look at these these guys they're called ghost pipes or indian pipes and they're completely white so they don't require photosynthesis so often plants like these benefit a lot from these mycorrhizal networks so mycorrhizal if you break it up myco is mushrooms and rhizomes is, is the root root network. So there's a whole network underground between uh, mushrooms and plants. And plants, uh, not plants, mushrooms, unlike us, they um, they actually digest their food externally. For us to digest food, we have to like eat it, right? So they can just break down food externally. And that's amazing because they can help uh, take pollutants out of soil often. And that process is called bioremediation. So often what people will do is they'll pass microorganisms and nutrients through um, soil and like polluted water. And they've noticed that over weeks or months, the concentration of pollutants is going down. So fungi are very helpful to us, not only just removing pollutants, they can be used as medicine, as food. Um, but mushrooms are quite complex. And if you look at the, what is this, the left side, you'll see lots of scientific names and lots of different, you know, like breakdowns. But for an easier classification, we often classify based on how they look, what their shapes are. So often if you like see a mushroom app, it'll show you what, how is the breakdown? Is it gills, pores, teeth? What's the shape? Um, so we won't get too into the science of it, but we will see what different mushrooms I have seen. This is basically an excuse for me to share uh, awesome pictures of mushrooms that I've seen all across Quebec. I'll be covering some mushrooms that I've seen in spring, summer, fall. Um, not so much winter. I'm not saying there aren't uh, mushrooms reported in winter. There are obviously a lot of wonderful, resilient uh and sometimes even delicate mushrooms that are, that are reported for winter. It's just that I haven't gone hiking very much in winter, in the dead of winter, and I don't have a lot of pictures to show you. So there are lots of overlaps between spring, summer, and fall. Uh, and this in no way is a comprehensive list of uh, different kinds of mushrooms that you see in Quebec. So let's get started. Let's get started with some spring mushrooms. So some very fun and you know exciting mushrooms of spring are morels if you heard of them they look like these little brain brain like structures um i have never seen them in the woods because it's, it's quite hard to spot them um because they're kind of brown and they they blend in with the with the with the forest with the dry dead leaves you know um i have however seen them and eaten them um 
I, I go to my local Michael, uh, Michael shop. It's called Michael Boutique. I'll talk to you guys about that in a little bit. And they had wonderful um, specimens, fresh specimens of uh, morels for sale. And I got some from there. There's also chanterelle, which is also very, you know, uh, seeked uh, mushroom. Uh, it looks looks like this. I have also I'm also yet to see this one, but I have seen them in real life um, at my co-boutique again and tasted them there. I have, however, seen uh, some mushrooms uh, that are not the not the most <laughs> choice edible type mushrooms, not most sought after, but they're still you know fun to have a look at. So I I've seen these ones called uh, dryad saddle. They're polypores. I'll talk about polypores in a little bit and oyster mushrooms. Oyster mushrooms are edible and they're quite nice. Um, but however, this being said, don't go outside and see a mushroom and then immediately eat it because that that's that's not. That's not the right way to do it. I'll talk a little bit more about that soon. Um, polypore mushrooms are often bracket mushrooms and they're these like woody mushrooms that grow on trees. And you'll see these often. These are very abundant. Um, uh, they kind of, and they, they're often present in many seasons. You know, they're called polypores because when you look at the underside right here, they have many little pores. Um, and often they can be like leathery and woody and you'll see these really beautiful colors. They're called turkey tails or these ones called hoof fungi. Um, and they're very resilient. Some their resilience almost impresses me because I see them in winter, um, even when it's like too cold. Often mushrooms tend to be a little bit finicky and like the right temperature and humidity to pop up. Um, but these guys are quite abundant. So often if you like see something hard and woody, it's, it's possible that it's a, a polypore. Um, let's look at some summer mushrooms. That's exciting. Things get warm and humid. Um, recently, <clears throat> recently I found this one called a butterfoot bolete. Uh, if you guys know what a porcini mushroom is, porcini is in the same family as a bolete. Um, and if you look at the bot, like the, the bottom side, it also has little pores and it's not, not, but it's not a polypore. It's different from that. Like I said, mushrooms are very complex. Um, and some, some mushrooms have gills. So this is a very nice characteristic identification for one of, for these mushrooms. Um, and the, the really pretty buttery yellow color, which might give its name, the butterfoot bullet. Um, I also saw these myriad colors of mushrooms and these are these are so exciting they look like they're very poisonous but these ones fortunately are not they're called uh wax caps if you look at the green one it's called a parrot wax cap um because you know it's a parrot green color is beautiful and they have a layer of like a slimy hum like a moist layer on the cap so it almost looks like it's made of glass um because of the cap so i guess that's why it's called a wax cap they can come in these beautiful scarlet color uh like a honey honey orange color um yeah there are lots of different types of wax caps and they're not poisonous to some extent they're edible but they're not not a lot of they're not sought after because they're very small and i guess tend to be a little bit slimy um you, you'll also see a lot of these cute little orange uh mushrooms pop up they're called mice, mycena, and their orange color actually has antibiotic properties. Kind of reminds me of penicillin, which is also used as an antibiotic. Uh, might kill bacteria in human body. Uh, these some these are some of my favorite mushrooms. These are called shaggy ink caps, and they are kind of creepy or also funny because when you uh, when they come up they're fine and if you like cut them the insides of them is white to pink but in within hours it will start becoming this deep black color and it will just become this like slime after a while so what it does is once it uh pops up within two to three hours it starts to self-digest its gills and then forms this kind of black ink color to spread its spores isn't that just fascinating um, you'll also see very similar mushrooms, not very similar. You'll see these kind of, you know, lines, they're called mica caps. And often you'll see them pop up, you know, in, in the little grassy, grassy areas or like next to sidewalks. Um, all right. And then these are some 
miscellaneous ones that I saw this summer, I got really excited. They almost look like little zombies trying to crawl out of uh, the, the ground. Uh, these are not, not a lot of these are edible. In fact, some of these will get you sick. Uh, this one is called the sickener. Uh, it's not very toxic, but if you eat it often, you'll get like, you, you might have, you know, digestive problems or it might make you uh, throw up. It's not great. Uh, and this almost reminds me of the Super Mario uh, mushroom. It's called, and uh, it's from the Amanita uh, family. And often you'll see the red and white spotted one. I was very, very excited to see the, the yellow version of this. Um, yeah, so these are some summer mushrooms that I've seen. Fall is autumn. It gets really exciting because you see all sorts of really cool mushrooms. So if you go for a hike or a walk, uh, keep an eye out for jelly mushrooms. Often these yellow orange ones are they're, they're, the common name is called witches, witches butter. You can see the amber or the darker version of this could be black witches butter or amber jelly fungus. Um, or, you know, often you have apricot jelly fungi. So that's a nice type of fungi where it's kind of blobby and jelly-like. Um, these ones are also my favorite because they kind of leave an evidence. Like if, even if you go on walks and hikes in winter, you might see these beautifully blue colored um, pieces of wood and they're stained by these uh, little fungi called, the common name is called green elf cup. Um, so you can tell that, yeah, in, in a previous season, there, there were these cute little green elf mushrooms. And in the before times, these pieces of wood were actually quite prized because they were used in like woodwork where um, they'd, want a, they'd want a piece of color if, if they, they were, there was a collage. So it was, it was quite prized in the before times. Um, often in fall, if you're taking a walk, you might also see these guys. They are, they have very colorful names like dog's vomit or <laughs> wolf's milk. Uh, but these are, um, they're, they're not fungi, they're slime molds and they uh, often behave more like animals and they like, you know, move everywhere quite fast. Um, and yeah, you, you can like pop these and they look like toothpaste. Um, yeah. Some, some people find it kind of gross, uh, but yeah, you, you probably see them in autumn. You also see a lot of mushrooms that uh, are potentially edible, but always be careful. Uh, don't pick up anything and immediately eat them. Uh, these are oyster mushrooms. They're beautiful, but white mushrooms are a little bit tricky because there are quite a lot of white mushrooms that are very poisonous. Um, these resemble a mushroom called, I think, angel's wings, I forget. Um, those are deadly poisonous, so be careful. Um, these ones, these beautiful orange ones are called chicken of the woods. Um, they are delicious and apparently resemble chicken. And um, this is one of my other favorite ones, which are called lion's mane because it has these this beautiful mane-like structure. They can also come in a coral structure, but these are different from crown tipped coral fungus. If you see, there's a small difference in the shape and type. These are growing from bottom up. The, the lion's mane is going from bottom to down. No, top to down. Um, you also see some puffball mushrooms. When they're young, they're like these dumpy little creatures, but with age, they kind of become this brown color. And if you poke them, they'll release the spore into the cloud. This is not the best for you to breathe. So if you see them and if you poke them, poke them by all means, just don't put your nose on top of it because the spores are not good for you, your lungs. <laughs> they actually at a younger stage, the giant puffballs are edible. Um, there are also many different kinds of mushrooms that have, uh, very cool morphologies to spread their spores around. This is called a bird's nest fungi and they have little spore packets here and their little bird's nest um, structure is um, optimal for raindrops to fall on them and spread their spores. And uh, these ones are, I think, they're not edible mushrooms, but they pop up everywhere. And I didn't find their um, common names. <laughs> they're, they're just featured here because they're very pretty. Um, but I don't think they're edible. But how did I, how, how did I get into mycology? Basically, 
I went on hikes and walks. My department does a grad trip every fall. So that was the first time I found the chicken woods and my friends and I found some uh, lion's mane mushroom. And ever since, it was just so beautiful to see these mushrooms. Ever since, I've always kept an eye out. And it's almost like, you know, how you feel with Pokemon. You gotta catch them all. You know, once you see them, you're just like, gotta get, catch the next one. Gotta take a picture of this one. Um, so you can also be a mycology enthusiast. I and mean, you don't even have to go that far. If you are in Montreal, you can go up Mont Royal with your uh, friends and family, have a grown up with you if you are um, a kid. Um, and you can still see lots of mushrooms. In fact, even on parks, I couple of weeks ago, I was walking and there was this kind of patch of land and there are these little mushrooms spread all across it. At first, I thought somebody had just like scattered grocery store mushrooms, but actually they were growing there. And somebody before me got curious and kind of pulled out a couple. I wasn't even mad. I was like, I, I understand this curiosity. Um, and they were growing right there. Some, they look like this, probably from the agaricus family the common mushrooms that we do eat at do find at the grocery stores um and here are some mushrooms that i mushrooms and fungi that i did see on my walks um at Montreal. so you can go on a hike on a walk look at the sidewalks if it's if it, ha if it has rained for a little bit you might find some fungi friend and friends and observe them. It's really nice to kind of have a keen eye for different kinds of, you know, different types, different morphologies of mushrooms, different colors, attempt to identify it, but don't eat anything right away if you don't know what you're doing or have the slightest doubt. The best thing is to take a picture, maybe talk to your friends about it and move on. Um, you can also read and look at photos of specimen and join local and online mycology communities. So let me talk about some resources. Um, basically, how, how do you how do you even start identifying mushrooms? What some things that can help you is to kind of look at a mushroom. Often, uh, you see a mushroom; it'll come with the you know regular parts that a mushroom comes with. Uh, it'll have a cap. It'll have the underside or the gills. It might have some pores. It might have little dots on the cap. Um, it'll have the stalk. Um, the stalk often comes with something called a partial veil or a universal veil. So you can look at these overall shape and this will help you identify what type of mushroom it is. Often you can also look at the color um, and you can do this really cool thing called the spore print, which is characteristic of what a mushroom uh, is like. Um, you can press the mushroom a little bit and see what the bruise color is like. Uh, you can take the cap of the mushroom and put it on a paper or aluminum foil and cover it with a little cap and leave it overnight. And it'll give you this really beautiful spore print and it will help you identify what kind of mushroom it is. Some things that help me is to have a wish list. I do have this wish list where I write down all the mushroom names that I want to see. And then I, then I go and look, look it up on the internet and I'll see what, I'll see many pictures of these mushrooms to kind of put it, Put, put it in my brain's database. What does it look like? So if I come across, you know, in I come across it on streets or in nature during my hikes, it really helps to have that. I watch a lot of videos and often like buy a mushroom growing kit. Um, and I visit Michael Boutique. So if you are in Montreal, um, Michael Boutique is on Saint Denis, and they often have wonderful mushrooms and expeditions. They'll have dry mushrooms, fresh mushrooms, and you can check them out. I don't work for them yet just really like them. <laughs> um, you can also use some ID apps, uh, iNaturalist or Mushroom Observer. I really like this one called Shroomify right now. So it helps me choose different types and tells me what are some top mushrooms for August or like what are some foraging tips. Um, yeah, I hope you guys uh, get to find some mushrooms and I hope you identified some from, from, from this uh, presentation and go ahead and explore and make some fungi friends. <laughs>